The next step in our setup procedure will be to change feed fingers and collets. Here again we will refer to our layout to identify the collets required. Under the tools required list we see the collet and feed finger numbers listed. Upon securing the collets and feed fingers we can remove the feed tubes from the machine. Using a 3 8 T-wrench, loosen the 3 8 16 square head set screw on the inner carrier. Push the stock reel tubes back approximately 2 feet, allowing clearance for feed tube removal. Disengage the chuck lever roll throwout and the feed lever throwout. And manually open the collet in the fifth position. This will ensure the bar end will retract with the feed tube. Pull the feed slide detent knob and lift the feed slide latch. Slide the feed tube assembly to your left, off of the left slide bracket, and out of the machine. Repeat this procedure for all five work spindles. Jog the machine to half index. Place a brass bar between the spindle gears to prevent the spindles from revolving during collet removal and installation. Insert the chuck wrench into the inner spindle until the groove on the chuck wrench is flush with the end of the inner spindle. Slowly rotate the chuck wrench while applying pressure on the chuck wrench pusher. When you feel the pusher snap forward, the wrench drive pins have engaged with the mating holes in the collet and removal can begin. Put the cam lever handle into one of the four holes in the chuck wrench knurled collar. Pull a handle toward the front of the machine until the threads break loose. Continue to loosen the collet by hand until the threads are no longer engaged and remove the collet through the tooling area. Repeat this process for the remaining four collets. With the work collets removed, the spindle should be cleared of any chips and sludge. This is done using an OSHA approved solvent such as Varlene and a 2 inch boiler brush. Saturate this brush with solvent and run it through the entire length of the spindle until any debris has been removed. Repeat this procedure for all five work spindles. It is advisable to oil the threaded portion of the work collets before installing them in the machine. This will facilitate collet removal. To install the new collets, with the machine in half index, slide the chuck wrench through the inner spindle until it extends out the end of the work spindle, approximately 3 inches. Place the new collet over the nose of the chuck wrench. Align the drive pins with the holes in the collet and apply pressure to the chuck wrench pusher. Once the drive pins have engaged with the collet, draw the collet into the spindle and screw the collet into the inner spindle by turning the chuck wrench counterclockwise or toward the rear of the machine. Once the collet is hand tight, use the cam lever handle to seat the collet.
With the machine at half index, the burring spindle collet may also be changed. The burring collet may be changed in the machine or off the machine with the burring spindle clamped in a vise. If the burring collet is changed outside of the machine, it is important to clamp the burring spindle on the burring spindle gear to avoid damage to the spindle. In an effort to present tool setting procedures in greater detail, the burring spindle has been removed from the machine. Remove the brass pin from the spindle gears before attempting to jog the machine. Now we will change the feed fingers. To change feed fingers we will need a bench with a vise and the feed tube wrench that is supplied with the machine. The feed tube wrench consists of three pieces, the wrench body, the wrench block, and a 532nd Allen wrench. First remove the feed slide from each of the feed tubes. It will easily slide from the feed tube outer sleeve. Slide the wrench block over the feed tube and align the slot in the wrench with the key in the feed tube. With the wrench block positioned over the feed tube key, clamp them in a vise as illustrated. Slide the wrench body over the feed finger in line with the cross holes. Insert the 532nd Allen wrench through the wrench body and feed finger. Pull the wrench body toward you, wrenching the feed finger counterclockwise. This will loosen the feed finger, allowing it to be removed by hand. Install the new feed finger, threading it into the feed tube and tightening it with the wrench. Repeat this process for the remaining four feed tubes. The feed tubes are now ready for installation in the machine. Each feed tube outer sleeve is marked with a position number, 1 through 5. The mating feed slide is also marked. Assemble the mating feed slides and tube assemblies by sliding the feed slide into the slot on the feed tube outer sleeve. Please note a change in design. The pin locking method for keeping the sleeve from revolving around the slide clevis has been discontinued. Pins may be removed from all existing slides of this type. Each of the five chuck slides and the rails on the left slide bracket are also marked with a position number one through five. Insert the feed tube assembly into its corresponding spindle. Align the feed slide with the slide rail and push it forward. Pull the feed slide detent, lift the feed slide latch, and slide the feed tube forward while aligning the key in the feed tube with the keyway in the inner spindle. Release the feed slide latch. Repeat this procedure for the remaining four feed tubes. Be sure the feed tube position numbers match the slide rail and chuck slide position numbers. Once the feed tubes have been installed, push the stock carrier back into position. The ends of the rails on the left slide bracket should be flush with the ends of the inner carrier. With a 3 8 T-wrench, tighten the 3 8 square head screw that retains the carrier. Stock the machine and check each spindle for proper collet tension.